Okay, so today we're going to be doing an iPhone forensics demonstration. And, you know, this is a demonstration, so we want to focus on that as much as possible. So we're not going to spend a ton of time talking about it, but I feel we do need to cover just a little bit of background here. So how did it all start with the iPhone and forensics? Well, first, if you can remember, there was the iPod. You know, it was cool. Then we had the iPod Color, and it was cooler. And then we had the iPod Video, which was even cooler than that. And before you know it, along comes the iPhone. Everybody had to have one, and this includes criminals. So, you know, now we're all up to iPhone 4, and, you know, iPads are kind of like the hot thing to to have right now. And with that being said, you know, more crimes are being committed using mobile devices because these devices are becoming smarter and more capable. And nothing fits this bill as much as the iPhone does. Now, in another video, I'm going to do some similar forensics uh, analysis that as we're going to do here, except I'm going to be using uh, an iPad to do it. But today we're going to look at how to do uh, some basic acquisition, you know, how to get the iPhone, uh, how to grab the data, and then how to analyze it in this particular video. Now, where is the data stored? Well, obviously it's stored on the phone, but more specifically, uh, it's either in flash memory or on the onboard hard drive. Don't forget, anytime we talk about forensics these days, since data is so mobile, and we're so mobile, you have to consider uh, other alternative locations such as routers, firewalls, uh, log files, and things like that as well. So a lot of times, and at least in some of my bigger cases, you know, the, the pieces that come to that, or the smaller pieces of a case that tie the big piece together, specifically when we're talking about digital stuff, is often in the form of log files or something. So um, don't overlook those. So basically the steps are, you know, you need to get the device, do your best not to let the battery die before, you know, plugging it into some type of power source. Um, plug it into a forensically sound workstation. And of course, this is all after you've done the chain of custody, uh, follow that properly, you know, use a Faraday uh, bag and all of these things. Uh, we're leaving out that stuff in this particular uh, video because this is meant to be uh, a more technical video and a how-to. But, um... We do cover this from very beginning to very end uh, in some of our forensics classes where we take you through starting a chain of custody, take you through completing the chain of custody, handing off the evidence to someone else, uh, and then, you know, picking up from that point, being the uh, investigator or the first responder that actually takes the image, and we take you all the way through that process until we get to finally, uh, you know, actually uh, analyzing the data. So once we get it, once we get power to it, we want to plug it into our workstation, our forensics workstation, load your forensic software. doesn't really matter what it is. It's whatever you're comfortable with. In this video, we're going to be using Paraben. Acquire the data, and then analyze, report, and you're done. So that's essentially what the, the bases are. So, um, you know, let's not waste much any more time on uh, the slides here. We just wanted to talk about it. We're going to be doing this against a 3GS. Uh, we're going to be using Paraben's device seizure to do it, and we're going to focus on acquisition and analysis. In other words, get the data off the phone and then analyze it. That's our focus today. Later, we can look at reporting, uh, how to use Paraben to generate pretty reports and things like that. Um, that part, I think most people can figure out if you just hit the report button and tell it what kind you want, but we're going to look at some of the more uh, you know, important things when it comes to gathering this data. So let's move on to uh, do the actual grab. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going to start device seizure up. This is, again, this is from Paraben. And there are several things that I like about uh, the way Paraben does stuff with their mobile forensic solution. And I'm going to share some of those with you once we uh, get into it here. Now, we're just going to create a case, um, and we'll just name it iPhone. Uh, 
iPhone case. And once we've created a case, you'll see that it'll populate and start our uh, information dialog here. And this is where we start putting in our case number and filling out the different information related to this particular case. Now I'm just going to, you know, put some arbitrary information in here. And keep in mind, we've already got the iPhone plugged in. It's already connected to um, the computer here. And, you know, I just auto-populated some more information in this little form uh, just so we can get past that. I don't think you need my instruction on how to enter your name, address, and telephone number. So uh, let's put a good-sounding email address here. Yeah, iPhone.com sounds good. Yeah. All right. So, you know, we got our case populated. Now we need to go to data acquisition here. And this is where we're actually going to dump the data from the iPhone. Now, for all intents and purposes, we're going to pick iPhone and iPad here. And you'll understand why when we go back later. Uh, and we're just going to select the default options. USB is the only option we got here. Now, we're going to go ahead and select this option to pull backup data. But if you look down at the bottom, notice it says acquired structure and contents of files. That's auto-selected. So we can't really unselect that right now, and that's good because we want to select all that stuff as we bring the data over from the actual phone. Now, that went pretty fast, but understand this is because I just clipped the video. That process is going to take probably anywhere from three to four hours if you get all the data I've got here. So just be prepared to wait on that. Now we can see we've got pretty much everything that was on the phone, even voice memos. Um, if we look here, we can see our voice memos. We can see that uh, these are just recordings, voice memos that were, were made on this phone. And this error that doesn't mean anything. All it means is there's not a uh, you know, media player built into Paraben to play it. But we can also see properties of the device here, such as serial number. Here's a digital certificate, uh, the device certificate. And if you look down, there's also a public key uh, for digitally signing stuff that was, in, that was uh, in the device. There's also serial numbers, um, you know, lots of different information here. Uh, time zone information, uh, you know, software behavior, key types, even the, the wireless network card's MAC address was just down there. But some more important information, we can look at map bookmarks, we can look at map history, places that this person has looked up via their map application on the iPhone. We can also see Safari history here, which is, um, again, you know, very forensically relevant information. Um, we could see Safari suspend state. We can also see notes. We can see call history, uh, SMS text history. And, um, you know, one of the things that I really like here is this dynamic text. Because this is text that, that the that Paraben didn't really classify as one thing or another, but it sorts it nicely. And you can see that this is clearly a message here, and it was probably part of an email that got deleted or something of that nature. But as we scroll down, you can see that there's a wealth of information, DSIM, card information, um, all types of useful forensics data here that you can now analyze. Uh, you know, here are some notes. These were information and notes. Call history is included as well, including, uh, if you look there, we can even see duration of the calls. Now, as I'm clicking, if you go over to the left, I just hit the sorter button. It's going to sort all of the data by type. And that's what these numbers are going down here. It's going to sort every, every object it found by type. But, you know, notice as it's doing that, I'm still able to interact and do other things. As I collapse the phone numbers there. So that's one of the really cool things about the way Paraben approaches forensics. We don't have to wait for it to finish its processing or finish, finish its sorting for us to keep doing other things. For example, we could even go ahead and generate a report now if we wanted to do that. 
Um, and I'm just going to try to make it right over one that I've got locked so it'll fail because I don't want to write over it. Um, but, you know, we can see our report options. And notice our sorting to the left there is still going on as I click through these options. And this is one of the really, really cool things that I like about the way uh, Paraben pl uh, approaches mobile forensics uh, and forensics in general. Is you know, we need to start looking at data immediately. We don't want to have to wait for the program to finish sorting and parsing and processing. Now, you know, I'm just going to write an arbitrary name. Actually, I'll try to write over a file that's here. And I've got this file locked, so it's not going to be able to write over. Uh, we're going to save reporting for later anyways. I just wanted you to see how easy it was to go through and say, hey, spit me a report out. So, of course, it can't overwrite that one. But that's, just, that's as simple as it is for, uh, you know, writing a report out. Now, there's lots of other great, great features here. And notice, as we're going, it's still sorting. You know, it's, ab it's about 99% done. But it's still sorting this information by uh, different types. And that makes it very useful for you to go back and forensically uh, not only talk about but discuss as well. So, hey, guys, hopefully, you know, this video has got you excited about mobile forensics and giving you some hope for mobile forensics. Uh, it's just starting to mature, but I'm starting to see good stuff out there. Uh, I've worked several cases and starting to see some good uh, output on that. So thanks for watching this.